Representing Belarus, Yuri Kuchko. Representing Republic of Moldova, Vladimir Bukusa.
Ani za ní.
Hazır sağa doğru. <gülüyor> Sonu göster. Kaç söz? Havaş.
Thank you. And a lifetime best is about two metres further than that. 33.50 in the third round. We're into round four now in this F64. Was the single below me amputee category. One of the newer ones that have come about in the last Paralympics cycle. Really smooth style from the world record holder. That's set in Krakow back in August. That will be the host of the next European Games, which at the moment doesn't have a para equivalent. Asians do, the Pan Ams do. But it's good consistency so far. And she stays on that mark.
back to the men's long jump T11. Complete visual impairment. You can see the guy there for Descarrega Bridgdevolt. He's on his fourth. Well, that one looks all right. He's got the white flag as well. 5.78 was his best, his third jump. He's in second position. Brennan Pallier leads with his opener of six metres exactly. That was his uh, season best. But Descarrega Pujdevalt is certainly pushing up higher. Well, 571. So he's still 22 centimetres shy of Pallier, who's at the top of the pile with that lifetime best. There is the man, Ronan Pallier. Consistent with his first couple, one centimetre in them, 5.57 for his third. Will he continue that backwards trend or will he push ahead and go higher than the six metre mark? Looking to improve on that silver medal from three years ago in Berlin. Well, that is a foul, I can tell you now. Way, way over the board. Let's hope he hasn't injured himself here. Well, there's a point there because he picked up a really bad injury ahead of the World Championships in Dubai. He recovered in time and managed to finish in fourth spot. But his last Paralympic Games were 2008, which is Remarkable for somebody who's had uh, success in the last Europeans and was a medalist in the relay in 2000. As we join Lopez Gonzalez in the shot, but he's the man well out in front. 16.62 in round three. That's a belter! Oh, that's a monster in the throw by Lopez Gonzalez. And the reigning Paralympic champion has done something maybe very special there. 16.60. His lifetime best, 1669, the world record set of the world championships in Dubai two years ago. And it's a new world record, 17 meters 02. It's the first world record of the week in Bidgosh. And what a throw by Kim Lopez. Fabulous in round four, as we go back to the long jump in Umbertop. Umbertop in the Bronze medal position at the moment. Well, wasn't that a throw just a moment ago? First time anyone's got over that 17 meter buck. Incredible. Umbatov, no problem with the jump. So important, the guides in this T11 long jump. There is more track action coming up as well. Men's meters T20 opening rounds. Two races taking place. Gold medalist in the 800 meters from Portugal goes in this one from three years ago. Maria Besa. Poland again with a twice European silver medalist in the 800. Jakub. There is Korea Besser. Great Britain's club. First major championship for the mayor from the Charles Street Barnett Harriers Club. Delabir Rodriguez Ramirez, his brother, will go in the second of these heats. The Spaniard and second of the Portuguese. Carlos Freitas, who was fifth back in Swansea in 2014. We'll go from lane three. So the intellectual impairment category. And the men's 400 meters, T20, the first of two.
Interesting about Rodriguez Ramirez with his brother who's going in the second who uh, encouraged him to take up the sport. So they're away at the first time of asking. No problems there. Career base, they got away very quickly indeed out there uh, in lane six. He's uh, blasting around. This is Great Britain's Columba Blango. So Blango is the one out in front at the moment. Correa Besa is there. And Rodriguez Ramirez makes up the uh, top three. Rodriguez Ramirez now up on the inside of Correa Besa. Looking for uh, Blango, who's out there in first position. The uh, Great Britain athlete, the youngster. As they move around, it is Rodriguez Ramirez Delabair, that is. His brother, Diona Bell, going in the uh, second of the heats. But it's Blango of Great Britain who leads heading down into the home straight with around 50 meters to go and he looks like he's going to uh, ease through somewhat it looks like we're going to have uh, Spain in second and Portugal in third it is in that order Blango takes the win in a new European record of 48 58 so very good run for the Great Britain athlete his first major championships European record for him of 48 58 it is Rodriguez Ramirez who comes in in second and Correa Besa, who takes up third position. So the first three in each of these qualifies through to the final. Lifetime best there for Rodriguez Ramirez in second position. So the top three pretty much moulded in stone as we went into that back straight. Blango looking very strong heading around to the 200-metre uh, mark and into that final 100 metres there. It was guaranteed that we're going to go through. Rodriguez Ramirez pushing him towards the line there making him go a little bit quicker for the uh, British athlete and Blango comes up with a European record in the opening heat of the men's 400 metres T20 category so the top three go through it'll be the next two fastest to advance through to the final so we'll have to keep an eye out on the next heat as to see who those next two fastest qualifiers for the final are Confirmation then, a championship record as well for Columba Blango, as well as that European record, 48-58. Rodriguez Mirrors, a lifetime best, 49-16. And Sandra Patricio Corobesa qualifying at 51-55. So a rather fast opening 400 metres T20 in the men's category. Season best for Freitas, the second of the Portuguese so still a chance that he may go through to the final with the two fastest qualifiers also advancing to it So, Daniel Yuk in the men's shot put F12. Where for anybody to go in front now, it needs another new world record. 17.02 from Kim Lopez Gonzalez. Daniel Yuk of Ukraine in the silver medal position. 16.24, the best so far. And that's not too far away from the old world record mark, which was his of 16.69. Sixteen twenty-four, his season's best. Kim Lopez Gonzalez gave us something special in the last round of seventeen oh two. Well, the gold medal looks quite secure. Does he fancy another special throw? Well, there's your answer. That's uh, his effort of the day put in. That will go down as a red flag. Hello from uh, Will Downing and Tulsa Tuller, by the way, if you didn't hear our hellos earlier. So Lopez looking good for the gold, leading by just under a metre. And the title looks like being his again. Yeah. 
17 metres and two centimetres. That is some throw, isn't it? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be around the world. Cano Garcia, the uh, third of the Spaniards in this. He's not doing quite as well as uh, his compatriots. 9.73, his best to date. That was his fourth. That here, his sixth and final throw. So we've already seen two championship records here this morning and we've seen a world record and we've been going less than an hour. What isn't there to love about this? 9.77 for Cano Garcia, so he remains uh, in eighth position after his final throw. Having a chat there with the man who just set a new world record, Lopez Gonzalez, saying, maybe how do I do that? Cabrera, yes, sir. In sixth. 12.21 with his fifth, his sixth and final throw. He has, well, he has some, let's say, The sunglasses on today, I'm not too sure whether he'll need them too much. Maybe tomorrow. Well, 12.34, his last was his best. Now, Prunderu's already thrown a lifetime best with his third effort, 11.69. Bit shaky on his fifth for the Romanian. Well, that looks all right. But he's certainly going to be a long way off those medal positions. Ten twenty. So he stays in seventh. Book of of Belarus. 50 years of age and still going strong. Won bronze back in Sydney in 2000. 21 years ago. Well, he's certainly given it a sum. Has Bukov. Currently in fifth position. 12.43 is best. 12.91 is what he's searching for. But he hasn't got it. He's improved to 12.74, but he stays fifth. Marek Vitecki. Fourteen oh three, his lifetime best. If he can throw that, it will put him up into the bronze medal position. So he needs to find another meter and centimeters from somewhere. Sorry, I don't think he's done it. So this should be some interesting finish here when we get up into the uh, top two between Dan Liuk of the Ukraine and Lopez Gonzalez as we head back to the track for the second heat in the men's 400 metres T20 category. And we have Dianabel Rodriguez in this, the brother of Deli Bear, along with Artem Muratov of Russia. Let's take a look at them all. Levin Carlos Lima for Portugal. Six for Italy. Raffaella Di Maggio turns 20 in a couple of weeks. In five, Charles Antoine Kukaku. 
for France and four out of Muratov for Russia. And in lane three, the Annabelle Rodriguez. He's been previously an INAS world champion. Kuaku fifth in the 400 meters of the worlds in Dubai two years ago. Muratov, European Championship silver medalist in this 400 meters in 2016. Bronze in the worlds in Doha in 2015. Rez has a European silver medal to his name from 2014 in Swansea. So Rodriguez in three, Muratov four, Kuaku in five, DiMaggio six, and Lima is in lane seven. So it's the top three automatically through to the final, plus the next two fastest losers. And it's a good start by DiMaggio. That silver medal three years ago now in Berlin, in uh, a stadium that was set to be demolished, though I'm sure, like a lot of things, that's been put on hold for now. Kuaku out in front quite clearly, but DiMaggio keeping up with him very well. Rodriguez has got a good finish on him, and he's on the inside, so when the stagger evens up, he should be well in place too. It's the top three to make it. Kuaku looking very, very smooth. 48.64 is lifetime best set earlier this year, which is just inside the European record, but not ratified. This is a good performance from him. As he comes through to take the win, Kuaku wins it to Maggio in second spot. And Rodriguez through in third. 49. 7-9, the winning time for Charles Antoine Kouaku with the club sport to Bien. It's also a gardener when he's not running around tracks and he's planted himself into the final quite effectively. DiMaggio had kept up with him for the first 200, but obviously a glance behind had seen that there was a nice amount of room for him, although that was tightening up in the final 50. Kouaku Simple victory, well worth watching him in the final. DiMaggio second, Rodriguez third, and obviously Columba Blango of Britain with that 48-58 earlier, the new European record. The man they all now have to beat. They know about him now in his first major championship. As we go back to the discus, and it's Kaklovska. With her fifth in first position, 34-33 with that brilliant first up effort. Which was a championship record for Fastina Kaklovska. Season best and lifetime best further down the field as well. So plenty of effort going into this. Plenty of hard work leading up to it, giving them those results. 34 58. So she has improved on her own championship record. She's set earlier by 35 centimeters. Kostina Kotlowska of Poland. So that there with her fifth throw for Kotlowska was good enough for the gold. Inanessa back in second position and Crystal Volta. With the so Kowaku takes Kofi. the victory in the men's 400 T20. 49.80 ahead of DiMaggio. And Rodriguez Muratov is through as the fastest. Blanco, the fastest of the lot, though, with that new championship record and European record of 48 58. Lifetime best for Delaba Rodriguez in second spot. Heating up to be some final. That is at 6.52 Central European time tonight. 5.52 watching in the UK and Ireland. Approximately.
Well, the weather seems to be slightly clearing on what it was a little earlier in the day. Fire weather promised for the next three days or so at least. If not taking us all the way through to Saturday evening, which would be nice. Double sessions today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Deep to get your teeth into. Busy year ahead for a lot of these athletes. Some of them not deciding to turn up to this, but this man has, Lopez Gonzalez. He was 17.02 with that world record before. Not as good, but he has most certainly claimed the gold medal. Kim Lopez Gonzalez of Spain. Two fouls, but that fourth throw you see there, 17.02. that the world record taken from the man who finished with the silver medal, Roman Daniluk. Season best for him. Lifetime best for Dimitrovic in third position, but Kim Lopez-Gonzalez, 17.02 metres, a new world record. It's a lovely stadium, so this as well. Host of the last European Team Championships in 2019 and a whole series of World Junior Championships. World Youth European Under 23 is on the on the IAAF circuit, which is probably still the best phrase to use, even though they've changed their name to World Athletics. And in the world of Parrot Athletics, we now get a major championship here for the first time. No crowd here, unfortunately. Uh, no media either. No uh, print journalists, certainly here. And no overseas TV commentators either, but we'll we'll do our best to look after you. Tell me always. Well, there is more track action coming up shortly as well. Nice long one as well. Next up on the track is the uh, men's 5,000 metres T13. So the least of the uh, visual impairment categories. Plenty of athletes getting themselves uh, used to their surroundings. And you have to remember for uh, a lot of the athletes who uh, turn up to these European Championships, it's the first Quite a step up. We spoke about earlier. It'd be nicer if the spectators were here, but unfortunately, they're not. As we head back to the women's javelin throw, F34. Alexiuk is leading for Poland, who have the first field goal of the week. They have the first track goal of the week as well. So the medals table is going to look very useful for them. Well, in fairness, they took pole position at the last championships in Berlin. They always have a very, very strong team to Poland. It's the uh, same situation actually on the... I, yeah, IAAF circuit as well. They, apart from the, the last Absolutely. European indoors earlier this year, which were in Poland. So in the IAAF circuit, the three major events that will be on this year, the European indoors, the World Relays, and the European teams of the weekend have all actually been held in Poland. And just as a sign the way things can go wrong these days, you might remember at the European indoors in March, there were a huge amount of COVID cases. So the rules on sporting events have been tightened a lot in Poland since then. Absolutely. And pretty much all the way across Europe as well for a period of time. Slightly 
It's coming out of restrictions in certain parts. As Emmett of Germany with her almost ready to go. Bit of debate as to uh, which javelin, which weight. So you can hear there the uh, official just just checking to make sure that everything is uh, strapped down correctly. Can't have uh, the movement there, which might give you a little bit more freedom to throw the javelin. Everyone's in the same position. So once you're Trapped into position, it's all six throws. So you need to get yourself in a position where you feel comfortable. This is the uh, opener for Ermen. Been competing since 2006 from Cottbus. But next up on the track, it's the men's 5,000 meters T13 event. Seven taking part, 12 and a half laps for the least of the visually impaired categories. Igor Volkov of Russia, who are back into competition. His first major championships for the uh, man who is uh, 40, 32 years of age, I should say. Christian Benitez Sanchez of uh, Spain. Also, likewise for him. Another Russian, Alexander Kostin. He medaled in 2016 over the 800 and 1500 meters. He was uh, bronze as an individual uh, uh, competitor back in uh, 2019. Matthias Boonen, who was seventh in 2018, and Hudadi El Tabi of Spain, took up this sport in 2014. And he, Lukas Pateczki, who's a, a para triathlete as well from Poland, gold in the 15 and 5000 meters at the uh, Paralympics in Rio. And on the inside there, it's Maris Valic of Serbia, 19 years of age. He looks at two, doesn't he? First major championships. So the men's 5,000 meters, T13, 12 and a half laps. <coughs> and away we go. And uh, uh, racing out to the uh, front there is uh, Benito Sanchez, uh, along with him. Udabi El Atabi as well, who's uh, also gone out with his compatriot out in the front there. So, a bit of a speed they've gone out here to start with. So, we'll just see if they bunch somewhat over the uh, first couple of laps. Just trading places at the front there. So, Udabi El Atabi has now taken on the lead. The two uh, Russian athletes. A little bit further back as well, as well as uh, Miroslavic of Serbia, uh, who's in fourth position there. Volkov, uh, Vitecki of Poland in front, and uh, already being uh, left off the back somewhat is uh, Miroslavic of Serbia, the young 19 year old. So he's already a, a 10 or 15 meter gap at the back there. He wouldn't want to see it get too big as we move on uh, through the latter stages of this race as they uh, move around after the opening lap of this men's 5,000 metres T13 final. So loads happening, both in the field and on the track in this uh, opening 
morning session. 11 medals, seven of them in the field. This one of four, which is going to be on the track on the opening morning. Day one of five of these World Para Athletics European Championships in Bydgoszcz in Poland as they come around and head past where they'll take the bell a little bit later on. 600 meters of the race and already being left way off the back is the young Serbian Maroslavic, 19 years of age. It must be a rather tough baptism of fire when you come into it and all of a sudden the, the pace is quick straight away and you're trying to keep up with those at the front. Led by uh, Udabi Alatabi of Spain and along with him Benita Sanchez. His first major championships in the silver medal position uh, at present. But Fetecki of Poland sitting there in fifth position. The gold in the 1500 metres and the 5000 metres in uh, 2016. So he's got a bit of form. He knows para triathletes. Uh, it does that as well. So he's certainly a, a master of uh, more than just the one sport will. Yes, yeah, so we've got 10 laps to go in this and it's going to be a recurring trend we're going to see in later races as well. And obviously Tatiana McFadden, who's one of the great T54s and looking for more goals in Tokyo 2020. Later this summer has been ace in uh, para cross country skiing and in para biathlon as well. So it's Spain one and two here. We've got 10 laps to go in this men's 5,000 meters final. Yasin Udadi and Christian Benitez, the latter in his first major championship. Alexander Kostin has gone up with them as well. Bronze in the 5,000 meters in the last world championships in Dubai. Lives in Barnell, which is a major center for athletics, but also powerlifting as well. Silver in the 800 meters in the 2016 Europeans in Grisetta. They're all pretty much tightly bunched at the moment. Rasavlovic of Serbia, who turns 20 later in the summer, is still well tucked in there at the moment. And obviously, we can expect Poland to do very well this week. They usually do anyway in any European athletics and para-athletics event, but particularly on home soil. Vitechki, the former European and world champion. World champion in the 800 metres, going back to 2011 in Christchurch. But he's still a prime contender in this T13. It's least visual impairment of the three visual impairment categories. Udadi's still looking quite comfortable. No major pace, although Masavlovic has been left back a little bit and Volkov too. As we go back to Herman and Herman in the women's javelin in the F-34 going out in front. 17 meters almost with her second round throw and she's jumped above Joanna Oleksiuk. There's still some poles left to throw in this competition, but Herman goes into the gold medal spot in this with that 16.75 in round two. Well ahead of Oleksiuk, five meters clear of Oleksiuk. Well, we've had a, a German in the form of Johannes Vetter throw the longest javelin of the year in Poland in the last 48 hours and Herman goes into the gold medal position here she will finish in the top three no matter what and that is 17 meters 16 and that's an awesome throw she goes out in front and goes into the gold medal it's back to the track men's 5000 meters t13 no change to when we saw them a moment or two ago, Udavi Al-Tabi, the man who was uh, born in Morocco, moved to Spain at the uh, age of six. And we know he's got form in this race because he was a silver medalist just uh, two years ago in the World Para Athletic Championships in Dubai. That's amazing, isn't it? There's so many athletes can come off injuries and pick up medals. He picked up a, a leg injury just a, a short while before that uh, those championships uh, a couple months before in the, in the middle of that year and all of a sudden he manages to pick up a silver medal uh, later in the year uh, in November when he picked up that silver medal in Dubai and in hot conditions as well it had to be said so when he raced there in the 1500 meters he only came in seventh position he likes the longer distances so the uh, the 5000 meters and he likes being near the front of the field. So both Spaniards at the front. Benito Sanchez, his 
first major championship for him. He could do worse than to learn from the man who's in front and just tail him as he's doing there at the moment. Just sitting on his tail there, pacing himself nicely. And both the Russians in uh, Volkov and Kostin sandwiching in Vitecki of Poland there in the middle. So it's a, a race in five after Maroslavic of Serbia was dropped well off the back and dropped well off the back early on as well. So there's been a minimal change in what's happened so far. As they head down the home straight. Yet again, of course, ambitions for these athletes after this was postponed last Last year they saw Tokyo postponed as well. So all of a sudden things are being pushed in their schedule. And of course a lot of these athletes they have jobs as well. So I wouldn't say this is a hobby. It's a little bit more than a hobby, but it certainly requires a, you know, a lot of effort to be put into their training as well as doing a, a job for many of them as well. So. There is a, a lot of work that goes into it, which is completely unseen from all these athletes. So they're working away hard. They're working away as a group at present. Just over the halfway mark. So seven laps. Almost completed. They've done six and a half. They've got six left to go when they had got around part the home belt so maybe for another three laps they might keep it like this and then we might see someone try and put the pace on and try and make a breakaway when it comes down to the last 1,200 meters or so will yeah well they haven't increased that much we have seen in warmer conditions be it in Rio or Doha or Dubai in three of the last four global championships and actually London was pretty warm as well but not as much as the other three recent global championships where we've seen lots of dropouts lots of attrition has been very very heavy going for the T13s because I remember Elamine Chentouf who's been a Paralympic champion in London he's been a world champion he's the world record holder not finished a couple of those and he is one of the best around so 3,000 meters done, 2,000 to go. And that is five laps remaining in this men's 5,000 meters final. They've burnt off Darko Marasavlovic, the champion of David Hunter, Matthias Bonin as well, who's dad Leon was uh, a former athlete. I'm not sure if he's related to Indy Bonin, who's uh, pulling up trees at the moment in the Belgian Pro League with Ostenda. Is, uh, is one to watch out for, not in the European under-21 football at the moment because Belgium didn't qualify for that, but he does play for them. And there's going to be a, a lap in shortly of uh, Mirosavljevic. Bona's not very far away from that either. So, so Daddy and Benitez, the two Spanish out in front at the moment. Silver in the 5,000 metres last time out in Dubai for... Odani, coached by Benito Akeda and Mustafa Lucic Hanafi. He is Moroccan born, relocated in Spain at a very young age. Bonin's about to be overtaken now. The man who saw Usain Bolt on TV during the 2008 Olympic Games and said, I want to do that. And he is doing it. But with four laps to go, he's about to be overtaken by the Spanish pair, the two athletes from Russia. Kostin and Volkov and Poland still have a say in the affair as well with Lukas Witecki, the former European and world champion. There's good quality in this quintet. Uh, we're approaching just about 1,500 metres to go in this men's 5,000 final. Tulsa. We are indeed. And the Russians look like they've taken it upon themselves to try and make a move in two. Vitecki looks like he's not been left off the back, but he's almost pulling slightly there, so he's going to have to make sure he doesn't drop off there and just keeps on the coattails of the uh, pair of Spaniards and the duo of Russians as well. 
who uh, look like they're working together in tandem. A Russian and a Spaniard at the front, a Russian and a Spaniard in the second group, and Vitechki off the back there as the pace slightly quickens there from Alexander Kostin. And Volkov moves up into second position. So the man who's been leading for the entire race to date, Daddy El Atabi has had to push himself back up there because he was feeling rather comfortable on his first eight or nine laps. There's always a bit of shuffling there. I wouldn't have said there was almost a four, but there was a, a bit of a movement to try and get out and amongst it. Now they're in one big single file. So it's Russia in first and third, Spain in second and fourth, and it's Poland with Vitesky, who's there in the fifth position. Wouldn't even try and tell you what's going to happen here because two of their first major championships, they've never been in this position before. Anything could happen. Costin's holding the lead at the front. Looks very comfortable indeed. Udadi El Tabi. Just trying to keep on his uh, tails there. And Volkov, he's just trying to move up on the inside there. The world well, record holder in the, javelin the women's javelin throw F-34. A prime candidate, definitely. She's one of those who can deny Herman the gold. There's only two throwers left. There is a, a DNS in this from Poland, which means that the lowest Herman can finish is in third. But it's a big moment for Konovis. It's a big moment for Poland. And if she can get that beyond the 17 metres plus, it would have put her in the gold medal position. Instead, she's up into silver behind Herman and in a good spot here. Throw number two. Well, she put extra effort into that. But how much extra distance was in it? She's 43 now. Finished bronze in the last Europeans in this, bronze in the last Worlds, fourth in the last Paralympic Games, her best event, the shot, where she's the reigning European and world champion. They'll be back to the track shortly. You've heard the bell. Canopus with that 14.52 with her opening attempt, and here's the climax. So back to the track we are, and it's Idadi El Tabi of Spain who's uh, leading there in front, and he's got, it's Kostin of Russia, so the Spaniard has tried to put the, the speed on, and Kostin's going with him, the man who was bronze at those World Championships in Dubai just two years ago. Idadi El Tabi, though, he's trying to hold off, but Kostin's coming around the outside, Idadi El Tabi, it looks like he's gonna kick again, and further down the outside, there comes as Costin, who's taken the lead. And Daddy El Atabi, he's not going to live with him. Potensky's coming through in third place, but it is going to be Russia who takes the gold medal. Alexander Costin in 15 minutes, 0.53 seconds. And Daddy El Atabi comes home with his silver medal. And Potensky, who's just hung on there at the back, who claimed gold at the Rio. Paralympics in the 1500 and 5000 meters. He comes in the bronze medal position, but that man there, Alexander Costin, or Benitez Sanchez, has picked himself up. A championship record for his category. So Costin in the T12, he's mid medium visual impairment. So Benitez Sanchez, who's a least of the visual impairment, He's picked up a championship record coming home in the silver medal position. But that is the winner. Vitecki there of Poland in the bronze. Alexander Kostin, he medaled in 2016 over the 800 metres and 1500 metres. He's done better than that now. He's gone for a gold. And it took him until the last lap. He knew what he was doing. There was a group of five of them throughout. But then these two just broke away in the last lap. Adani El Atabi looked as though he had the measure, but Costin kicked again in the home straight. You can see the pain on their faces. 
But that pain turns to joy as he crosses the line and picks up the gold medal in the men's 5,000 metres T13 category. Brilliant tactical running by the Russian. He kept his head about him. He was always up there in the top four. Worked together with his teammate, Igor Volkov. Congratulations all around. Vitek picks up the bronze. It's Kostin. He comes home with the gold medal. And Spain, through Adabi Alatabi, he picks up a silver medal that goes with his silver. He picked up in Dubai two years ago. So we have back to, to the women's javelin throw, F34. In the javelin, Kenobis in the silver medal position, 1509 was her second attempt, 1535 she's just gone out to. <laughs> That's a good solid throw by Kenobis, but would need an extra two meters on top of that. In order to grab the gold medal position. Oh, 16-12, it's the best of the lot and it's not very, very far away. But it means that Herman remains in the gold medal position. Lots going on at the moment. As we're in the main shot, put F33. This is in the seated coordination impairment categories. We've not seen much of this final so far. This is Denny Serni of Croatia, and all the throws are coming at once. So Shirley just saying, uh, just needs a second. In second position. Certainly moving through the events at a, a rapid rate of speed. His season best is 10.52 for Denny Shirdy, a Croatian. Lifetime best of 11.40. Okay. 10.18 for his fourth, so no improvement. Crippen who leads. The Russian. With a very decent throw indeed. Season best for Crippen who's in front of Cherny. Eleven point three zero that mark in first place so after this one he's only going to have one throw left the croatian in which to try and push himself further up towards his competitor at 10 16 he has some work to do
Does the 28 year old. Silver in this event in Berlin. Three years ago. And at this stage, he's in the silver position again. Someone just told a good joke in the background. Technique fine. He looks exhausted. Well, that was his best throw of the six, 10.42, as we head back to the women's discus throw in the F55 category. And this is Banovskaya of uh, Belarus. Her first throw in the F55. All the throws again coming at once. All of the events coming at once as well. We've got 11 goals decided on this opening morning. And there's only three in this. Belarus, Serbia and Poland are the nations represented 1978 the lifetime best for Barnovskaya so Kostin takes the gold in the men's 5,000 meters T13 15 minutes dead almost and Hardy the silver with a championship record in his category of 1501 and the bronze medal a very effective bronze medal going to Viteczki of Poland Weather is not the most clement today, as you can see, and quite a lot of rain earlier in the morning has made parts of the track damp as Heikkinen comes into position in the women's javelin. This is F34. Herman leading this for Germany at the moment. Finland obviously has got a brilliant history in Javelin and Heikkinen has taken the gold of the last two championships she's got a couple of practice throws to get through but this could be the key couple of moments in this event and you can see why she has been champion in this uh, 1879 she went out to and winning the last European title in Berlin three years ago in Grosseto it was just a meter shy of that when she won gold Won the last two titles, and she's taken the silver in three of the last four world championships in the javelin. Practice throws have to be done first, obviously. There's. Uh, a set amount of time in getting the athletes wheeled in and strapped in, so obviously everything has to be done at once. As she looks for glory again in the javelin. She holds the European record in F34. This is a combined category between the 33s and the 34s in the uh, seated coordination impairment. Kimo Kinnanen is a personal coach. She's with the Silenjavin Ponistas Club. Lives locally. And the serious throws are coming. But how serious will they be? Here we go. She's been winning major medals since London 2012. Bronze in the javelin there. She's made it her own since then, certainly on a European basis. Uh, Land 
de, de... Un centre So that'll be a no throw. Uh, no, 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 no. 17 meters, 16. The target to beat from Airman Canova, 16, 12. And basically only needs to throw 11 and a half to get into the medals, but she's used to one medal in particular. There's only one thing she's interested in, and it ain't copper. Well, that is measurable. Heikkinen's got a good distance out in that. 17-16 is Herman's lead. Heikkinen is the last to throw in this. Nobody else has a say after her. 17-17 and she's got the gold. Heikkinen's happy and with good reason, 17.85, and that is the gold medal for Heikkinen. As we go to the women's 100 meters, T11. Complete visual impairment. Two go in this, only the winner is guaranteed a spot in the final this evening. So it's a straight shootout. Obviously, T11 guides present. Yulia Pavlenko, silver in the long jump of the last world champions in Dubai in 2019. Good long jumper as well. Her guide, Nikoslav Bonka, and first major champion for France, and Delia Bouleglen of France, and Handy Sport Lyonnais. Her guide is Farah Clegg. So, women's 100 meters. The winner definitely in the final. Yeah, whoever finishes second is going to have to wait. And uh, Bule Glem, her lifetime best set this year, 14.12, is slower than everybody else's lifetime best by at least half a second. So Pavlenko in three, Bule Glem in five. Set. Away, first time. That's a good start by Bulegla. Pavlenko trying to come into row now, and she is. She's just got the slight advantage. It will be Pavlenko to win it and to qualify for the final. And that's a championship record 13.28. Beats the championship record set in Swansea seven years ago by Osno Akbula. Bulegla not far behind, so she's got a good chance of reaching the final herself. So it's a good start on an early morning for Yulia Pavlenka for Ukraine. Twice been a championship, European championship medalist and world championship medalist in the long jump. Bulleglem started really well, but Pavlenko then began to drive strongly. Took the lead, took the advantage, took the championship record. That's an impressive start to the European Championships for her. And it all about Pavlenko ultimately. Little glance across from a coach, Vyacheslav Ponka, just telling her that she's okay, she's going to win. Doesn't really matter about the time so long as she gets the number one spot, and she did. So eased up a little bit. 
championship record is hers and Heikkinen has got the gold in the javelin the question is though how further can she throw 1785 with her second first and third with fouls 1674 with a fourth Rain is slightly coming down in Bidigosh, you can see there. Fifteen ninety three, so this will be the last throw of the competition. Marcheska didn't start. So Heikkinen, who has the gold medal, but now it's her against the javelin to see if she can throw any further than 1785. Ermin with the silver, and it's Kornobus of Poland who's in third position. But this is the gold medalist who throws a foul with her final attempt. It doesn't matter though, because Marianne Heikkinen has picked up the gold medal in the women's javelin throw F34 final. Thanks to her outstanding second throw of 17 meters and 85 centimeters. Herman of Germany in the silver medal position and Lucina Konobis of Poland. Well, Poland have picked up another medal already. She takes the bronze medal, 16.12 for Konobis. Congratulations all round for Mariana Heikkinen of Finland. Worthy winner again. Gold medal this time in Bidigosh 2021. So Pavlenko so into the, the final with a very, very firm victory. So Pavlenko wins, championship record 13.29. Lifetime best for Bulaglem, 13.40. She's improved it by 0.7 of a second. She's a good candidate to reach the final, but she'll have to wait for heat number two. And you can scratch that at the bottom there for Akbalut, who goes in this second heat, that championship record. Take it away by Yulia Pavlenko just a moment or two ago. Just the two to go in this. So Didi of Italy does not start. So same again. Which will mean with only two in the first and the two best times afterwards to all four who are competing in these two heats will go through to the final. <laughs> well, Dida is there. Not on the start sheet, but she's there. So the lady there on the right, you can see, from Turkey, Osnu Akbalut. What can she respond with? Just had a championship record taken away from her by Yulia Pavlenko. She set that back in 2014 in Swansea. Bill Quintana of Spain. She was silver in this event 
three years ago in Berlin. Akbalut in Swansea, she won gold in the 100, the 200, the 400. She's also gone through the distances. She won Paralympic gold in 1500 meters in Rio. Bill Cantada, who'll go from the middle lane, from lane five. She won silver, as I said, three years ago. She won gold in the 200 meters in Berlin. And Didi of Italy was bronze back in Swansea in 2014. She was fourth in Rio, just missing out the medals in 2016. Paracyclist as well is the Italian. So Akbalut goes from three, Bill Quintana from five, and Didi of Italy will go from seven. The winner automatically through the final, and then it will be the next two best times from the remaining three who don't win the two heats who will then qualify for this evening's final so complete visual impairment category athletes tethered to their guide compulsory ready to go act below from three Bill Cantana in five Didi goes from seven and they're away with no problems at all. And it is on the outside, Didi, who got away the quickest of all. She's doing ever so well. Looking very strong is the Italian on the outside. She's going to take the win. As long as she goes across the line first, she gets landed off. Bill Quintana is second. And Akbalut of Turkey, who had a championship record taken off her in the previous heat, has finished in third position and unlikely to go through to the final. So that... Having had the championship record broken just a short time ago, Didi has broken the championship record herself. Stay, stay, stay. 1351 yes. by Ayola Didi. So two very quick races in these heats, but the Italian got out very, very quickly indeed. A good four or five metres at the end. Crossed the line, very quick time indeed. 13.51, you can see in the background there. Bill Quintana coming through in second. And Akbalut didn't have a great start and didn't have a good middle distance of the race. And she looking likely to miss out altogether. No such problems to Didi. Well, two championship records in the women's 100 metres T11 in consecutive races. No problems with the wind, just a plus 1.5 metres. There it is. Confirmation, Ayala Didi, 13.51. Bill Quintana in second with 14.09 and Akbalut. Disappointment for her, the Turk, 14.33 in third position in that heat. Netherlands are always well represented here. Laura Bars, a multi-championship medalist. We'll see her later on in the week. They've uh, sent a good team here as usual. They're well represented uh, in the sprints as always. Portugal as well. Some teams a bit smaller than usual. Ireland have sent six. There's a lot of warm weather clothing there, though, isn't there? Yeah, it's needed. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. See, I'm not great with masks. I'm not sure if that was the top of the head of Marcus Rain there or not. <laughs> kind of looked like it, but... Added to the fact you can't tell if people are scowling or smiling. You've heard her smiling with the eyes, haven't you? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's the back to the women's discus 55. <laughs> a very impressive that 100 meters. We've seen the two fastest championship 100 meters in history. Latvia through Aga's happiness normally grabs a gold in the field. So men's shot put F33. Currently being led by Alexander Krupin of Russia with 11.30. Uh, That's season's best for him, which uh, in many cases we are going to see a lot of. Back to the women's discus F55. Final of Sky leads. Uh, 6 uh, 18 26. Petrovic going for Serbia now. Eighteen thirty four, her lifetime best set this year. Ban of Sky going out to eighteen twenty six, so that's the target. All the throws coming at Watts. Major championship debut for Ivana Petrovic. Still Karolina Stravinska to throw for Poland. Petrovic going through her practice throws at the moment. It's a brilliant athletics area because we're quite close to Torin who had that European indoors on the IAAF circuit back in March. Sopot, which is only about an hour or two north of here, held the world indoors in 2014. So they love their athletics here. They've got a lot of stadiums that are uh, capable of staging big events, shorts of the uh, Silesia Stadium down in the Schlonsk region. That's what's held the World Relays this year in the European Team Championships uh, at the win. So they're teaming with proper athletic stadiums in Poland. So Petrovic showing good form going into this. Uh, we've had a lot of Grand Prix, obviously you'll know in Switzerland the past couple of weeks and lots of world records set there. Off the cage from Petrovic. Finally throwing for real. And waiting to get a proper markup. 18.26 her target. Well, the atmosphere obviously helps the the visual impairment athletes, but you just know that everybody else would want a bit of a din. It means you hear a lot more going on in the background. She's had to be a more, bit more conservative with that than she ordinarily would do. 
And each of those two throws going down the left hand side, the first one not getting out of the cage, that one did. It just stayed inside the vector. How close to 18.26 was that? into the lead lifetime best so Petrovic goes into the gold medal slot for Serbia Shravinska is a 20 meter thrower Petrovic has added one meter 20 centimeters to a lifetime best That's gone down as a no throw again. As we go to the men's shot put and the F33. Time to check in on Dolazel. So Dolazel with his third attempt. Currently in fifth position. Two more left to go after him. It's Krupen who currently holds the lead of Russia. His first throw of his six, a season best, as you can see there, 11.30, quite some distance in front. Dolazel, though, with a lifetime best for him of 7.31. But all signs are pointing towards the Russian gold. Alexander Krupen. Dolazel with two left to go. Demand from the Czech Republic. Happy with his work so far though, that's 7.34, that lifetime best. As we head back to the track, the first of the two rounds in the men's 100 metres T54, Leo Pekatati, who goes in the opening of those two heats. one of the greats going in this heat. It's the top three to go through. Two from Armenia, Karpetian and Nazaria. Leo Pekatati, the eight times European champion, primarily over 100 meters. So it's Bichinok in three. Silver in four events in the Europeans in Grisetto in 2016 and three bronze. Bichinok 
Oh, in three, Tati in four, Almas in five, Vandalat six, Capetian seven, Azayan in eight. The top three to go through, plus the next two. Set. So we're in the first time of asking. That's a really good start by Nicholas Almas of Sweden. But there's a reason why Leo Pagatati's called the flying pin. And here he comes. The eight-time champion has been winning this since 2005. And he gets the win here. 14.85. Bichinov also through in second spot. And really there was not much trouble for Leo Pagatati. As soon as he got going 25 meters in. Well, Pichinok with those seven medals in 2016, Leo Pegatati with three golds in 2018, last Europeans in Berlin. 17 major titles he's won in his career between Euros, Worlds and Paralympic Games. Alma's got a fabulous start, the Swede in lane five, but as soon as Leo Pegatati got going, uh, they were not going to catch him. Rens van der Waterlaat was discovered by Kenny van Weigel, spotted him at uh, a talent recruitment day, gave him lots of encouragement. He's got a good chance of making it. Just held off for the third spot by Almos, who gets the final qualifying place for now for the final. Karapetian and Nazarian, both from Armenia, down in fifth and sixth, and they'll have to hold on. But Leo Pekatati, no doubt about that. The world record holder set at London 2012. The championship record he set in Berlin three years ago at the last Europeans. Didn't need to be anywhere near that. And he actually came very close to breaking his own world record in Berlin. He was 0.2 out on the day. Time's not really very important today, except if you've got the fastest one. And he does, 14.85. Bichinok in second and Almas in third. So back to the field again. Here's the men's shot put F40 category for those of small stature. Miguel Montero, Matthias Sloop, who heard his name plenty of times before. Montero, the world and European record holder. Picked them up earlier this year. In Braga in Portugal. Always nice to get a record in your home country. There's Matthias Loop. 10.30, his five time best. Montero, who I just mentioned there, world record, European record. He'll go as favourite. He's on the field of the Netherlands. His lifetime best at 9.62. Russia back in competition, Dmitry Juskin. Alexander Vu. Plenty of Belarusian athletes in the field. It's Janis Fischer of Germany. So six to take part. Dushkin actually holds the championship record from 2017, or 2016, I should say, in Grosseto. So a very competitive field. Conditions are awful for this event. Let's not sugarcoat it. but it's a very strong field nonetheless.
There's the man who'll be going first, Matthias Sloop of Croatia. As soon as I mentioned a little bit earlier that the sun might be poking its way through, this happens. So the 24-year-old from Croatia will be first up. Picked up a bronze in the F40 in Dubai in 2019. Considering the conditions, that's a, a fair up first throw. No doubt he'd be hoping for a, a better year this year, having picked up an injury before the 2016 Paralympic Games. So 9.34 for his opening throw. And next up is the man who has that world record, Miguel Monteiro of Portugal. As we head back to the F33. Lab of Poland, who's up for his first attempt. Group of Russia leads with that season best at the top of 11.30. So that rain really starts to come down in Bidigosh. Shock, it's extremely slippery. You can see he's got the towel there, trying to wipe it as best as possible. Just try and keep it dry. Mikko Glab, his second throw. That's pretty good indeed. He likes that one. As soon as you let go. Bronze medalist three years ago. He picked up a bronze in the 2013 World Championships as well. That's the best he's done. And he likes that one. 10.46 puts him over medal position, the season best. Leo Pecatati taking the opening of the men's 100 metres T54 heats. This one here contains the man who's always been there or thereabouts himself as well, Kenny Van Vigel. Numerous medals over various distances. The man second from right there, the Dutchman. Great Britain's Nathan McGuire also taking part. He was bronze in Berlin back in 2018. So a strong field. Van Vigel will go from four. Maguire will go from lane six. Quintero de Macias of Spay will go from out in lane eight. Another one of those multi-talented athletes who is a para-triathlete as well. He's over 200 and 400 metres, that man there, Kenny Van Vegel. He's never won it at the European Championships over 100 metres. Could this be his year? On your marks. Set. So it is Van Vigel who gets away fastest of all. Maguire's got away well as well. But also on the inside, it's Matila of Finland who's got away quickest of all. It's Matila who's out front, Van Vigel in second. And it is Nathan Maguire who's in third position. And it looks like it's going to be Maguire who takes third. Well, Matila of Finland has picked up the first position there. Van Vigel's gone through in second. And Nathan Maguire 
of Great Britain has picked up third. So those three will go through to the final. And then after that, it'll be the next two fastest who advance. But a very quick start indeed by Esa Pekka Matila of Finland. So Finland take wins in both the heats after Leo Pekatati picked up the victory in the opener. Van Vigel though, safely through in second place. He knew it was the top three to go through. And Great Britain as well, Nathan McGuire in third position. So solid performances from those three. And then from there, we'll be waiting to see who goes through. 14.56, the time given uh, for Matila. You can just see there that he just skirts away by a length or so. Van Vigel got away quick. Matila, though, pegged him back pretty quickly. Maguire there through very comfortably for Great Britain as well. So it's Finland, the Netherlands, Great Britain who go through in country order. Essa Pekka Matila. 14.56, 15.11 for Kenny Van Vigel and Maguire, 15.16 as well. And Ludwig Malta through in fourth place. Looks like he may also have gone through as the fastest qualifier. Well, the rain may be coming down, but it hasn't dampened the fun on the track. A bit wet indeed, Nathan. Not too sure it's nice, though. Each to their own. So Finland take heat two as well as the opener. Matilda Van Vigel and Maguire go through. Ludwig Malta does qualify as one of the fastest in fourth position in that heat. Also going through, Renz van der Wodelat. Should be some final indeed. As we head back to the well, women's Stavinska. discus throw, F55. Great position in the women's discus, F55. She's got herself into the lead. 19 metres 14 had put her into second spot behind Ivana Petrovic of Serbia. But that last throw, 1976, means she wins the gold for Poland. She was the only 20 metre thrower going into this and having won bronze in the shot in the last Europeans three years ago she was fourth in the discus in Berlin and here she is as a European champion Petrovic will take the silver but of Skaya third for Belarus we've had better weather than this at major championships I can't remember the last time we loads of rain <laughs> There was quite a downpour in Dubai, but uh, there was a different reason for that. <laughs> so Trevinska takes Poland's third gold of the opening day. And there may be, maybe, will be many more to come. Kotlowska scoring in the F64 discus. Joanna Mazur on the track in the women's 1500 metres T11. And Stravinska well in position here. We've got two more track finals coming up. Both in the women's 400 metres, the T37. That coordination impairment. The second strongest of those, if you like. And the uh, T47 as well. Amputee categories below elbow or wrist. Well, she's put a great effort in to throwing out to win the gold and an even better effort in making sure her discus is dry. Still just the one throw that's been good enough to get her into the gold medal position, but that's all she needs. That was 1878. Two throws to go. Okay. 
world record in this has stood for uh, 13 years from the Beijing Paralympics in 2008 from Marianne Bugenhagen. Still been throwing up until quite recently. So we'll join Jushkin instead in the F40 men's shot put, 10.47. He is our leader. Silver in the shot at the 2015 Worlds in Doha. Bronze in Grisetto and Swansea, having missed the 2018 European. So bronze in the last two Europeans he was at. And at the moment, he's looking good for gold. He's got the championship record from five years ago, that 10.83, the yellow line, the world record, held by Miguel Montero of Portugal, who's having to fight to keep his position up, and 11.01, that world record from Braga in February. 10 metres 30, Duskin just shy of that, Montero in second place, and Fischer of Germany third, 9.77. of Belarus with a no throw so far back to Stravinska and attempt number five in the women's discus F55 the gold is very much heading for her neck she took a while between throws four and five if you take a break it's usually allowed between three and four but perhaps in the rain and the really inclement big gosh weather she was allowed another one. She could very easily throw two fouls now if she wanted to and just get back into the dry because she's won it. But maybe she has a ride getting it beyond 20 meters, which will be another chief goal of the day. Good set of marks though by Stravinska all the same. Her last throw is coming up. Look to be around the same mark. She's taken throw six while we're still waiting for throw five. That was 1888 throw five. And that was the last attempt, which she's hoping will be a bit beyond 1976. She's a 20 meter thrower as we've been saying. So if she can get that over the line, the invisible line in major championship action, that will have an even more golden feel. Well, there's been a red flag. So Stravinska wins with that 1976 from round three. As we go back to the shot puts. And here 40 for those of short stature. That man there, Matthias Sloop. We saw him earlier with his first. He's currently in fourth position. He remains in fourth position, 9.47. So Dimitri Dushkin leads ahead of Montero, that man there, who's the world and European record holder. 10 centimetres he's got to make up. This is third. He's not messing around either. Well, that's way out there. So his own world record is 11.01 that he set back in February of this year in Braga, in his home country of Portugal. And that's very close to it. How close though? Well, 10.61, it puts him into the top position.
ahead of Dimitri Dushkin by 14 centimetres. Back to the shot put this time though, the F33. I think we'll be going back to the track as well. Well, here's our champion in the women's discus F55. And it's another gold for Poland. Karolina Stravinska, 19 meters, 76. Ivana Petrovic with a lifetime best in silver. And Arena Baranovskaya of Belarus in third. So the final of the women's 400 meters, T37. The second strongest category of the standing coordination impairment. So in this, Russia, Ukraine, Poland and France represented. The reigning European and world champion, Natalia Kobzar, goes in five. So in lane eight for Poland, first major championship for the 20-year-old Dominika Rybicka. First major championship, but she's qualified for this 400 meters final. In lane seven for Ukraine, semi-finalist in the 200, the 100 and the 400 of the last World Championships in Dubai, Elena Turi. In lane six for Russia, fourth of the 400 meters final in the last Worlds in Dubai, Elena Tretiakova. In lane five for Ukraine, the reigning European and World Champion, Natalia Kobzar. In lane four for Russia, bronze in the universal relay at the last Worlds in Dubai, Victoria Slonova. And in lane three for France, bronze in the 400 meters in the last European Championships in Berlin in 2018, Lara Ustaritz. Georgi Hermitage has been a regular champion and record breaker in this, but not here today. So Usteritz in three, Sanova in four, Kobzar five, Tretiakova six, Terek seven, Rybitska eight, the final of the women's 400 meters, T37. Away first time, that's a strong start. Tretiakova in six, and by Kobzar in five as well, despite the really wet underfoot conditions. Rybitska started excellently too, you have to say. Usteritz had the best season's best as they come through the back straight. Kobzar's flying at the moment. Rybitska's not doing too badly either, but the stagger could be eaten up on her very, very quickly. Natalia Kobzar, who's taken gold in the last two world championships, the 200 meters in London, the 400 meters in Dubai. She's well clear at the moment, even though it's not Dubai weather today. Sonova of Russia is going to be very close. Usteritz in three. Not too far away either as they straighten up, but it's Natalia Kobzar who's well out in front. Sonova in second place. A real battle for the bronze medal between Tretiakova in six and Terek in seven. It could yet be a Ukraine one too, but sadly it will be Ukraine one. Natalia Kobzar well out in front. He's going to take the gold medal for Ukraine and they'll take the silver two through Terek. Kobzar wins a 103.78. And Tretiakova takes the bronze ahead of Slonova, who was pushing for the gold and who ends up outside the medals. A Ukraine 1 2, a Russia 3 4. 103.78, the winning time. Cobbs are so strong. And she's retained the title that she claimed in Berlin three years ago. Well, Kobzar started really strongly. Terek at that stage was back in the pack. Rybitska had started really well, but started to fade then in the next 200 meters. 
Kobsar in the closing straight. Look at that gap. And look at how Slanova then began to fall back, unfortunately. It can happen. It does happen in the coordination impairment. Where athletes just slow up dramatically as they head towards the line. And a chance of gold had gone. And in the end, a chance of bronze had gone too. Kobsar, so good, so strong, takes the title again. 103.78 winning time. The yellow and black, which we see a lot on the Parrot Athletic Circuit. Usually yellow and blue elsewhere. But Cubs are really, really strong. And when we worked with Evan O'Hanlon in a, in a previous World Championships in Doha, he was explaining how, particularly in the longer races, you, you can shut down. It, it can happen. And it looked to happen to slid over there as she fell from second to fourth. But Natalia Kobzar, that was a really, really good win. World record unthreatened, but in conditions like this. And anyway, in championships, it's about the medals. Opening session's gone very fast. But we still have some medals to be decided. Particularly... Well, she'll be gunning for them. Laura Barnes very, very shortly. The national coach, Arna Mull. Dutch team gave us some clogs in the last day in Dubai. They did. Which was nice. I still got them. Yeah, so do I. My kids tried they, to uh, nab they, them a couple of weeks ago, but they're, they're, they're still in the right place. Mind you, they took my mascots from different championships as well. <laughs> I'm so su I'm surprised Arno is not with his phone on Instagram at the moment. Dutch team Very trained adept. regularly at the Very Olympics. Adept. Yeah, they train. Well, the F40 shot put final still to complete. But this was what happened just a moment ago, Will. Natalia Kobza. Yeah, Evan O'Hanlon, what he was talking about, the spasticity, it can tighten up in that category as you come towards the end. So the last 100 metres especially can be very difficult. No such problems for Kobsa. I'm very much enjoying the music. Yeah, One more just event to tell on the you, we were looking at track. that replay there. Um, there is a potential lane violation being checked, but as it stands, no disqualifications in that 400 final. It was a lifetime best well, this is, as well in Ukraine. This is getting set up now, the last final of the morning session which will be the women's 400 metres T47. The rain looks to have slightly stopped, but as you can see from those pictures, the track is still very wet. Those shot puts can be as well, hence the chalk powder being applied by the German. So Janis Fischer is currently in the bronze medal position. 977, his first, his best. Almost went too far. So 
So that music's good enough to get him an extra couple of centimetres. Not this time, though. So the season best of 977 keeps him in third position. He's only 16 centimetres ahead of Matthias Sloop, but Montero, the world record holder. Heads up for throw number four for him. Well, if that's in, that's very good. Just a question of where it landed. Maybe. Well, 10.92, a new championship record. Puts him into first position. So he holds the European record, he holds the world record, he now holds the championship record. So Dushkin relegated down to second, Montero up into the gold medal position. So here is the man who was displaced with that last throw from the man who just walked down behind him there, Miguel Montero. Quite some displacement as well. 24 centimetres now between them. Yeah, there's still quite a bit to go in this. There's still uh, two full rounds remaining. And the big joust is between the defending champion and the world record holder. The man with the golden shot, Dmitry Duskin. He's never won a major championship gold in his career. Neither has Montero. Well, getting closer, it feels to that world record line. They've certainly been bombing close to it today. So back to the track for the last of the finals for the morning session, the women's 400 metres T47. The upper limb affected category. Poland have three going at this, all three of their first major championships. Katarzyna Kazil, 17 years of age. Voltura from Cluj, who goes from lane six. And then again, another making her debut. Chris Winter of Poland. Slightly older though, but her first major championship. Solaveva, who set a national record last year, will go from lane four for Russia. And Agata Galan, 18 years of age. Just uh, recently, goes at her first major championship. So Poland certainly blooding many athletes at a major championships already here in this first session on day one. Solaveva, who goes from lane four for Russia, who was fourth at the 2015 and 2019 Worlds. And they get away all in the one go, I think. No, there seems to have been a false start. 
Well, at first viewing, it looked as if they're away. Has someone slightly moved before they've jumped? Always the way, isn't it? Last track event of the session. And you get a false start. If that's what it is. We'll just wait for confirmation from... Now, it does come under IAAF rules, so... False start. And you're gone. Yeah, the standards are Plenty very of discussion. This. Plenty of discussion going on. The question is, was it athlete error or technical error? Because at first viewing when they jumped, well, Casille's been given a yellow by the looks of it. Can't blame her if she's a bit nervous. 17 years of age. Oh, she's lucky. We'll get to the bottom of exactly what happened, but she was disqualified in her previous final and she's been given a yellow in this. So I suggest Katazina Kazil might want to make sure she does nothing wrong before the gun goes this time. I was watching, she was close, but she got away fine. They all get away. And it is that lady, Kazil, in lane seven, who's away best of all. But on the inside, Krasinska, her compatriot, has really brought up the gas stairs. Zolaveva as well as streaming down the inside in lane four is the Russian Zolaveva now, who takes the lead with 200 meters to go. So she moves in to the gold medal position. It's Poland in second and third at Y Kazil and Krasinska, who's in the bronze medal position at the moment. It looks like it could be a race in three behind them. So Zolaveva, who was fourth in 2015 and 2019, is she going to pick up a much long-awaited gold medal? She leads with around 70 metres to go. On the outside, it's Kazil, who picked up the yellow card early on. And from there, it's a battle between the other two poles as to who's going to pick up the bronze way out front. It's Anastasia Zolaveva of Russia, set a national record last year. What you come up with this time? Almost one minute flat. Kazil on the outside has picked up the silver medal. And it is Poland as well. It looks like Galan who's come through on the inside and picked up a bronze. So Zolaveva takes home a gold medal for Russia. Kazil there, confirmation in three seconds after Zolaveva came home. It is Galan who's picked up. So Poland, a silver and a bronze, but it is Russia with the lady who's missed out so many times, who's picked up a medal. Anastasia Zolaveva. I said before, she set the national record last year. It's been a difficult year or so for all those athletes, but she worked extremely hard down that back straight. She took the lead with around 250 to go, 200 to go, and she always looked like she was going to hold on to it. She stretched away, and in the end, a good victory by 20 or so metres by Zolaveva. Poland pick up another couple of medals but it's the 24 year old started training seven years ago she's been building towards it made a debut in Doha six years ago there's the triumvirate of Poles two picked up medals one didn't perhaps Casille with a silver Maybe lucky to do so after being yellow carded early on. 
Doesn't matter for now. Doesn't matter for that lady. Anastasia Salaveva. Gold medalist in women's 400 metres T47. So that's the end of the track events for this morning session on day one in Bidigosh. Just a quick line to bring you from that women's 400 meters T37, the preceding final, the silver medalist in that, Elena Tarek of Ukraine. We were watching back a replay of that. There was a lane infringement that's been called against her. So she loses the silver medal, loses the lifetime best. Elena Tretyakova of the Russian Federation moves up into silver. Uh, her teammate Victoria Slanova up into bronze. Gold for Natalia Kobzar of Ukraine. As we go back to the shot. And here's our reigning European champion, Matthias Sloop of Croatia. But he's out of the medals right now, and that's how it's going to remain. Fourth spot, and he never got better beyond this second round throw of 961. It's a major championship debut for Janis Fischer of Germany. And at the moment, it's bronze for him, and if he can add around 70 centimeters to his lifetime best, then suddenly he finds himself up in the silver medal position. Well, Fisher only turned 19 in February. And that is shy. It's not going to be an improvement on this spot. So what a championship debut. He's a bronze medalist. And Sloop, the outgoing champion, can only finish fourth. Nine seventy-seven in the opening round sets his standard. This man has set the ultimate standard. Championship record in round four, ten ninety-two. The world record is only nine centimeters beyond that, and it's his. So, is this going to be a victory lap? Dushkin still has a throw after this. Montero to hang on to gold. And to test his world record even further, he really wanted it, you can tell that. Because that would almost make the gold medal secure. He won silver behind Sloop in Berlin at the last Europeans. He was really close to his own world record, but just missed out. 10.83, Montero so close to the goal. This, the only man who can deny him, Dmitry Dushkin, who's won bronze at his last two European Championships. How close can he get to the world record? 10.92 is his target. It's close, but not close enough. So Dushkin takes the silver. It's his best European result. He has been a world championship silver medalist before. That was one of his shortest of the day. 10.68 his best. That was 10.51, which was right in the middle. And Montero with the championship record, 10.92, takes the gold for Portugal. His first major title. Dushkin the silver and Fisher the bronze. Slope, the previous champion, finishes outside the medals. He's a fan of Benfica, who didn't finish in top spot this time in Portugal. But he has done so here. Miguel Montero, championship record, 1092, takes the gold for Portugal. Dmitry Duskin, the silver for Russia and Janis Fischer the bronze for Germany. Slip the previous champion in fourth.
11 titles decided on this opening morning, four in the track and seven in the field. And we've got 18 more titles to be decided tonight. They're really cramming them in. Now, this was the pre-final, and you can see just stepping in the lane inside, that leading to the disqualification of Alina Turek. She was very, very close to the athlete on her inside, Tretiakova, and as a result, she's been disqualified. The gold remains with Ukraine's Natalia Kobzar. And immediately after that, Zolaveva picking up her gold in the women's 400 metres T47. Confirmation of that. Kassil, who picked up the silver, very lucky after a yellow early loss of warning, and Galan also for Poland taking third. Well, it's great to have these championships on and Poland the fourth time this year hosting a major athletics or para-athletics event. They've done a very, very good job in achieving all that and it's the second major event in the space of 48 hours in Poland. So kudos to them for that. Uh, 17.30, 5.30 CET is when it all resumes again with the women's discus f38 and the men's long jump t64 that's 4 30 in the uk and ireland and 15 30 3 30 gmt and there's 18 goals decided tonight it's been a great opening morning for poland little wet, a little rainy, but it will get better. There's been no problem whatsoever with the athletics, both the track and the field. That's been of the highest class, as we expect. 11 down, 162 to go altogether. So stick with us over the next few days till Saturday evening.